I think unless you're living in a cave or something, most people are aware of some of the things that are happening to them personally, for sure, you know, whether it be heat waves or we're all living in the climate casino. And if we happen to be unlucky, our city experiences torrential rains, maybe is flooded out. We get uh, derecho, leveling trees, tropical storms, depending on where we are. You know, what I'm going to try to do mostly in this talk is uh, join the dots on what I call abrupt climate system change. You know, it's a climate system which involves, of course, all components of the earth, the oceans, the atmosphere, the, the biosphere, the cryosphere. All of these are different elements of the climate system. And abrupt change is when you have changes occurring that are much faster than the driving forces. Uh, many people are, uh, including scientists that have studied this, these phenomena for many years, are very flabbergasted, if you like, or amazed at what's happening to our planet right now. Um, the sea surface temperatures are very warm, but there's a lot of heat from below that is coming up and it's keeping the sea ice from forming there. Uh, it was very unusual to have a three years of a La Nina, the cooling phase, but now we're in the warming phase. And I think we're likely to set records, a new record with the El Nino. But what we're seeing happening right now around the planet is not really because of the El Nino. The El Nino is, has just ramped up. Basically, our, our climate system is, is a huge mess. You know, we're reaching temperatures that are so high in some food producing regions that the enzymes in the actual wheat itself are degraded. The yields are starting to be greatly uh, negatively affected by the extreme temperatures, not to mention heat waves and lack of rainfall. So, you know, what, what are we going to do about this? I mean, we're very good at talking about it. So we have these climate conferences. The one coming up in Dubai, the head of climate conference is an ex-oil person. So there's talk of uh, many climate people, NGOs, et cetera, boycotting the conference. I mean, it's, it's captive. OK, uh, often there's more fossil fuel lobbyists at these uh, climate conferences than there are people from any given country. Vast amounts of carbon from deep in the ground to the atmosphere ocean system where it's changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans, and it's do doing a number on all life on the planet, not to mention, uh, you know, changing uh, temperatures completely, bringing us to, uh, you know, heats that people and animals and plants can't really tolerate. We need to figure out the psychology of climate denial. Uh, we need to look at the psychology of nudging people to do the right thing, nudging companies. It's a very effective technique. Nature-based solution, biomimicry, things like that, you know, helping nature do what it's always done. We need a tipping point in human behavior.